Hey, Larry Stewart here with 4 Construction Pros. This is Kevin Hirschberger. He's a uh, product application specialist with Caterpillar's backhoe loader lines. Kevin, there's a brand new cab on the F2 uh, backhoe loaders that's really going to make people, uh, you know, get their attention in terms of, of uh, efficient operating. Why don't you tell us about some of those features? Well, yeah, this is the first time uh, where we have a chance to show it to the public, so I'm excited that uh, you stopped in to see it. Uh, a couple things we did to change inside the cab. Uh, on the control pods in the backhoe, when you're facing out the back, you want to be comfortable in that machine so you can be as efficient and effective as possible. So we made a control pods that are adjustable in both directions. So you can pull them fore aft and adjust any multiple uh, position and also with inboard outboard. Okay. So operator can set those, customize them exactly the way he wants them. Now is that just on uh, on electronic controls or are those pilot hydraulic controls? That's on uh, all our pilot control machines. Okay. So okay. if you've got pilot controls on the back, uh, you're going to have those adjustable pods. Okay. Now the 420 and 430 give you adjustment in both directions. The 416 and the 415, and new this year for those machines is the fact that we're going to have uh, pilot controls available on those. Okay. On those machines, the pods will just adjust four and a half. Four and a half. So okay. a little bit of difference. And there's a loader control advantage too, right? Yeah, we made some nice changes on the loader controls. Now this machine is an IT machine. So it's got the versatile front end on with the coupler. Mm -hmm. So on this machine, you've got a forward reverse shifter on your loader level. Okay. Now previously, that was on the steering column. Mm -hmm. You've also got your control for your MP loader on the loader lever and your diff lock. Okay. So now when you're doing loader work, you're in the pile, you've got one hand on the steering wheel, one hand on that loader control, and you don't have to be moving around operating any other controls. Yeah, yeah, that's going to make a difference to some yeah, folks. Yeah, nice setup. Yeah. We've heard a lot of positive feedback from customers that are running these machines. But it's not just about the the cab and 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 those those kinds of aspects of productivity. There's also a pretty significant efficiency advantage with this tier four final version of the backhoe, right? Yeah, of course. Right now, fuel costs are pretty nice, but you know, we know they're probably not going to stay that way. Yeah, forever. yeah. Let's hope they stay down there forever, that's huh? Right. What we've done uh, some things uh, for fuel efficiency, uh, transmission. Wise, we now have available an optional lockup torque converter. Okay. So if you were doing a lot of roading on that machine, when you get into high gear, the converter is going to lock up. It's like going to direct drive, and you're going to be more effective, higher ground speeds, and you're saving fuel. Mm -hmm. People have seen up to 25% reduction in fuel just really? with, just in roading with the lockup. Converter. Okay. Okay. Now, is that when you say roading, is that that typically uh, an advantage just for transport, or are people actually doing load and carry where they're going to get be benefits out of that? that You'll converter? see some benefit in load and carry, but the big part is, uh, especially governmental bodies. You know, they've got the town municipal building where they've got their machines stored yeah. and they're running around all over the, the town to do work. Uh, those guys are going to see some nice improvement with it. Other people, you know, I would, if you're uh, transporting the machine on a low boy, yeah. you're not going to see a huge advantage because you're not doing a lot of roading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Now, another improvement we made was uh, we've got an eco mode. Right. Okay, so there's an eco mode button. You can select that and it's controlling two things. You know, we've got the load sensing hydraulic system. A couple years ago on our uh, F-Series machine, we went to electronic pump control. Okay. So now when you press eco mode, you're affecting both the engine speed, dropping the engine speed down, but increasing your pump displacement so that you maintain productivity. Okay. So you're saving fuel. Again, we've seen between standard mode and eco mode, about a 20% fuel savings with virtually no drop in productivity. Wow, wow. That's uh, from standard mode to eco mode. That's correct. Okay, so yeah. when, you, when you compare Standard mode uh, in the F2 to standard mode in the F. What do you, is that? Is that equivalent or? Yeah, um, for most people, you're going to see as they move from tier four to tier four final, which this machine is, that uh, fuel consumption in general has increased slightly. Okay. So, uh, in in standard mode, you're going to see a slight increase in fuel usage. Okay. But more than make up for that when you switch to eco mode, and really virtually no impact on performance. Same engine horsepower rating, same kind of performance out of this engine that okay. we saw in the past. But now you've got a selective catal catalytic reduction system. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the way we're meeting tier four, and it's a pretty conventional system. Not that we have a huge breakthrough there. Yeah. But uh, we've got the diesel exhaust fluid, and we've got about a five-gallon tank for depth, mm -hmm. and you'll probably be filling that every third or every fourth fuel fill. Okay. Okay. And so we were able to eliminate the diesel particulate filter on these machines. Oh. But one other thing I might mention to you is uh, we've added a new machine in our product lineup, and that's the 415. Okay. okay. 
So the 415 is, is uh, if you think of our 416, that used to be our entry level 14 foot backhoe. Mm -hmm. Now we bring in the 415 F2 and uh, it's basically on a 416 chassis. We've got a smaller powertrain in there, a smaller engine. Okay? Mm -hmm. So down at about 68 net horsepower. Still is a pretty solid performer. But with the emissions requirement, that allows us to meet emissions uh, without the need for diesel exhaust fluid.